Kanisa, Baka Mwichiriza, Bona, Neba Home, Tisha, Obu, Tari, Baho. We share Shangozi to come with Chirisan, it went at home to Shah of Utariwaho. We share with now Abaru Hilay, he went Abare Mary Reyes Navahusa. And to my booty, he amasco, Kamaka, the Mission Resource is an organization that exists for the purpose of empowering and equipping and encouraging people here in West Africa. Many places in the developing world, Ghana here especially, underemployment or unemployment it can be as high as 70%. A lot of Ghanaians are unemployed and majority of these people are Christians who have no jobs. So the churches in Ghana suffer a lot. So Mission Resource likes to come alongside our Ghanaian partners or Liberian partners or Kenyan partners to allow them to start small businesses. We try to give people hope, give them a, a very low interest rate loan for this economy and, and give them a reason to get up in the morning. Without that, you know, life's pretty dull. And believe me, these people are capable. At Mission Resource, our heart is more about how best we can help our beneficiaries become successful in their businesses. So we work alongside with them as if we are co-owners of their businesses. We look into their business plans very well to make sure that the plan is clearly profitable and they can be successful at what they are going to do. Uh, families are being supported, children are being helped in their education, uh, churches are being planted. We see a long-term impact of the Ghanaian people, the Ghanaian businessmen and women, the rural people taking their economic destiny into their own hands and learning to work hard and manage their resources. One of the reasons we chose the name Mission Resource is we want to be a mission organization that creates the resources to help these people become what God had called them to be. To date, we have supported 154 businesses and at least over 400 employees have been working out of these businesses and over 1,630 people have so far come to Christ as a result of direct witnessing of our businesses and churches that came out of mission resource businesses to Christ. I can only see this growing more uh, into the future, especially as we have more 
resources, more funds to give out. We want to link those resources from the West, be them human resources, financial resources, to the people here and create partnerships that will grow God's kingdom. I want to welcome you to the first Mission Resource International Virtual Banquet. I'm pretty excited, actually. Uh, this is the first time that we've not been uh, constrained by geography. So if you have an internet connection, you can participate in the banquet tonight. So we welcome you, and uh, we just think this is going to be a great 30 minutes of your time. Let's begin in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to share the vision of Mission Resource and give an update. You're in control of all things, and in this time of uncertainty, Lord, we need you more than ever. As we say in Ghana, it's all by God's grace, and we Americans sometimes have difficulty understanding that even every breath we receive is a gift from you. So we Go forward with faith and, and know that you are in control. And we thank, that, thank your son Jesus for giving us life and life eternal. In his name we pray. Amen. You know, when you ask someone in Ghana how they are, they say, well, I'm fine by God's grace. But here in America, we pretty well think that we're in control. And the reality is God is in control. He controls each breath that we take. Mission Resource thinks that it's got an idea that's a better way, a better way to do missions. It's not the traditional missionary way. It's a way of empowering others to take God's kingdom forward through business. God's grace is allowing second generations now and Prophets being used to build church buildings, to evangelize, and just change the landscape of business and missions in Ghana, West Africa. We've been at this now for almost 16 years. It's hard to believe, but it's simply miraculous how God has used us. Again, it's God's grace. I want to share with you an opportunity that it looks like will begin in 2020. We're beginning a new fund called the Empowerment Fund. It will be led by Conrad Schwarzentruber and his wife Katie. They were lived in, in Liberia for two and a half years and were involved in the relief efforts for what was going on there with the Civil War. They then went to Ghana and founded and ran a microfinance organization for nearly six years. During that time, they established quite a team. A team of investment banker, a good accounting, managerial, and they trained this team from, by themselves. And many of these people are willing to come back to work with, with Conrad and Katie. So we're hoping that this works in, in 2020 just asking you to stay tuned. Mission Resources three core values are empower, equip, and encourage. Empower, equip, and encourage. And so what I'm saying is empower, equip, and encourage, repeat. As you will see on the pie chart behind me, it was one of our best years ever for Mission Resource. Nearly two-thirds of every dollar donated went directly to the mission vision of starting businesses and helping others overseas expand the kingdom of God in business. In fact, it was the second straight year for Mission Resource Ghana to be self-sustaining. They needed no outside help from us here in America to cover their overhead expenses. And in fact, Mission Resource Ghana, again, had over a 97% repayment rate. Tonight I want to share with you about three guys that were in Mission Resource clients early on. Ernest, Bright, and Jones. Ernest began a 
chair and awning rental business, probably back in 2006 or 2007. The business grew and he was able to get more chairs and more awnings and continue to uh, make the business a success. Today I want to share with you that we've empowered Ernest now in, in a greater way to work with people in his area and he actually is managing his own fund. And in, in fact, I was able to spend several days down in that area with the people that had been empowered by, by Ernest. And so a lot of the photos you're seeing behind me are people that have been, been empowered by Ernest. Not only is Ernest's business done well and he's working with other people, but he's learned a lot about organization and planning and he, through that they've built a new church building, a very nice church building. It's not an adobe building like we went, we worshiped in before. And in fact, there's a photo of Ernest sitting there on a the bench with in his church building. The second person I want to share with you about is Bright. Bright was in the used car parts business, and we've helped him with loans again for a long, long time. The second Sunday I was in Ghana on this last trip, we, we visited that church. And even though that was one of the first churches built by the missionaries in 19, say, 57 or 60, somewhere in that time frame, we drove in and it's a brand new building. And I find out later that Bright is the superintendent of this building project. He's been using his project and what he's learned as far as mentoring again to have a building that's three stories, has church offices in it, and they did it all on their own. So Bright is a perfect example of mission resource vision of taking it full circle. You may have heard me talk about Jones in the past. It was our largest project just by grace. It started out as a wholesaler for Nestle Foods. I just want to share with you, Jones has been able to use the profits from just by grace to not only build a new chapel, a new church building, I mean, he would never say that he did it, but he's led the way. They've established a new school and they have vans now that can pick up people and take them to church. So he's used his business to glorify God and expand the kingdom. One thing that I'm really excited about is that Abigail, their, their daughter, is a graduate of, of college today and is back in the business working with mom and dad every day. She was a business major and she's taken what she's learned and, and has joined the business and is embracing the whole concept of mission resource. Samaritan FM was launched in western Kenya, a little town near Yala, about 45 minutes north of Kisumu, and we had been working on this project for two or three years. And the vision of Peter Mowali and his experience lended perfectly to the establishment of this, this radio ministry. In July, they started, and it's been on the air 24 hours a day, seven days a week since then. And I was able to go to the official launch in August 30th of last year. Today, that ministry is going strong. It's totally self-sustainable because they sell airtime and advertising, and they have not asked for additional funds for mission resource. In fact, I want to share a quote from Brother Peter that I just got a couple weeks ago. He said, Brother Ketchum, it should cheer you to know that this Sunday, when we in Kenya are experiencing a personal lockdown, no church service or meetings are on, everyone in this region is attending the Samaritan Sunday service. We have 10 ministers, including a bishop from different denominations, serving God from the Samaritan altar. Testimonies are coming through the calls and SMSs. Prayer items are being responded to, making sure Sunday is not missed. See why God used you at the right time for His glory. We praise Him and honor Him for His love. The work continues to go on in Liberia. Say and Yah uh, have empowered uh, Priscilla Tua, who's now doing microfinance in one of the suburbs of Monrovia. 
and we're so glad that they continue to to grow in, in their ministry as well. One of the things that I've been working on now for nearly 10 years is a mission center. We acquired land there that took us five years just to get the title deed. But yes, this year in September, we broke ground. And the mission center will enable so many people to come to Ghana, meet the Ghanaian partners, and work to maybe expand business in Ghana that we totally embrace. So one of the things that I'm excited about is there's a short video that I'd like you to w watch at the conclusion of the banquet. It'll just take a couple minutes, but Morgan Murdoch does a tremendous job of, of telling that story. Let me just conclude with a couple things that are keys to mission resource. We have one foundation and two tensions. Our foundation is our confidence in the gospel. Jesus is relentlessly setting all things right, and he will reach his goal. In 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, There's only one foundation, the one and already laid, Jesus Christ. We have two tensions. Pro we're pro-economic development, but we're anti-greed. Money's a powerful tool and a deadly idol. And our second tension goes along with that. We're pro-networking, but we're anti-dependence. I cannot do it on my own, but you cannot do it for me. I was really excited years ago when I read that in the view of the Talmud, the highest degree of charity is to assist a poor person with a business loan or help someone find employment because work restores self-respect and independence. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I would now want to turn it over to Stephen Ie, who will share with you its inspirational message. Hello. I'm really thankful for the opportunity to speak at the Mission Resource International Banquet. Um, unfortunately, I was hoping it would be in person, but we thank God for the opportunity to still meet and worship Him and, and honor Him uh, virtually. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for today. Thanks for the friends and family and all those here on this call. I pray that you take my heart and speak what is true. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Investing in potential. When you hear the word potential, what comes to your mind? For me, what comes to mind are two questions that I'm going to ask you. The first question is this. How many seeds do you think are in this orange? Can you count them? The second question is this. How many oranges do you think are in this seed? Can you count the number of oranges in this seed? You see, when you see a seed, what comes to your mind? Do you think of something that is dead and needs to be thrown away? Or do you think about life? Do you see more, more seed, more fruit, more trees? Do you see the potential in this seed? You see... I'm really excited about what the work Mission Resource does because I personally feel connected to all three countries where Mission Resource operates. I'm from Ghana. I was born in Kenya to my Ghanaian parents. And I have lived with many Liberian families who came to Ghana and fled the civil war. Well, in 1989, Liberia went through a civil war. It lasted about seven years, there was peace for two years, and then there was another four years of war. I heard firsthand from all the families that lived with us about the devastation, the loss of life, the death, the killings that happened. An estimated 250 to 300,000 people were killed and over a million displaced. You see, I saw firsthand the effects of sin and death. And what happened in Liberia is just a picture of what happens to all our lives when 
we do not have the light of Christ in our lives. It's filled with sin, it's filled with death, it's filled with destruction. And you see, for many of us, when Jesus came into our lives and broke into our lives, he did not just come to give us, you know, a, a happier life, fancier stuff, you know, more nice clothes. He came in and broke into the darkness and brought his light. He came and set us free from the bondage of sin and death. I want to tell you two stories today. The first story is about my dad. See, my dad grew up in Ghana and he never knew his dad. Also, many of his family neglected him and really didn't take care of him. That was until Jesus broke into his life and turned his life around. Jesus transformed his life completely from what he used to be and he left his secular job and went full-time into Christian ministry. My dad became the National Director of Ghana Youth for Christ and then also the Assistant West African Director for Youth for Christ. He planted and pastored a church and he was involved in so many other ministries. In his latter years, he was a teacher at a Bible school. He's now going to be, the, be with the Lord and is probably celebrating right now. But the fruit that was born in his life continues to bear fruit. You can see in these pictures to the, to the left um, is my dad with a pastor from Taylor University who had come on a mission trip with a group of students. The next picture is our family picture in the 90s. Now, I have two biological sisters, but as you can see in the picture, there are about 10 of us there. So basically, we lived with so many people who were brought into our home just because of the transform, or mostly because of the transformed life of my dad. God inspired him and he didn't want to be like what he used to be. Or he also didn't want to be like the people who were in his life who didn't take care of him and didn't take care of those around them. So he invited as many people into our lives as possible. And, and so now I have many brothers and sisters who I love very much. On the right is more, are more recent pictures of Youth for Christ. On the very right, you can see three kids giving their life to Jesus at the Youth for Christ event last year. So even to date, even after his passing, God is still bearing fruit. The next person I want to talk about is Samuel Morris. You see, Samuel Morris was born in 1873 in Liberia. He was captured as a kid by a neighboring tribe because their family, their, their tribes were warring. And he was abused and tortured because he was used as a pawn to try to get more goods and resources from the, um, his, his parents' family. Well, at the age of 14, Jesus broke into his life and set him free, literally from the captors who had captured him, but also spiritually from the bondage of sin and darkness. Samuel Morris ended up in Taylor University. And the only reason why he ended up there, or the primary reason why he ended up there, was because he met some missionaries in Liberia. And he, in wanting to know more about Jesus, he asked them where they learned about Jesus. Well, they said New York, or she said New York. It was, a, it was a lady. She said New York. And that some guy called Stephen Merritt had told her about Jesus. So Samuel Morris set up to go to New York to find this Stephen Merritt guy and learn all he could about Jesus. Well, he ended up in Taylor University. But two years after getting to Taylor University, Samuel Morris died. And in his dying bed, a lot of his friends asked him, hey, what about the ministry that God had placed in your life to go back to Africa and tell everybody about Jesus after you studied about him here in, 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 in Taylor University? So Murray smiled and said to them, it is not my work, but it is his. He will send others better than I to do the work in Africa. So you see, Taylor University was so inspired, they committed to sending lots of missionaries all over the world. And we, we, we live with, with some missionaries from Taylor University living in our home in Ghana, and they've also gone to many other parts of the world. The seed that was planted in Samuel Morris life 150, 127 years ago is still bearing fruit to, to this date. The story, the story doesn't end there. So I found out about Samuel Morris about two years ago. And my wife and I watched a video of his life story and we were so inspired, we bought a series of the videos. It was called the Touchlighter series of various Christians who've gone on ahead of us. And we bought a number of them and we sent them to my mom in Ghana. And you can see from the picture, my mom still runs a little children's club from her house where she shares about Jesus 
and you know sometimes feeds the children as well so we we're thinking she was just going to show the videos to the little club and it could be part of their curriculum and their learning but she was inspired as well and got in contact with a local pastor and they set up an outdoor crusade in the neighborhood where i grew up so in the next in this next picture you can see um the neighborhood where i grew up and um, the crusade being set up there and lives were saved at this crusade and you cannot see but to the right of the of the of the crusade there was a there's a building there and in that home lived families from liberia that had fled the war and were just living right there so who would have known that a hundred year a hundred plus years later right across the street from where they were taking refuge or right across the street from my neighborhood a story of a liberian man will be shown on the streets of accra and people will give their life to christ you see the seed that was sown continues to bear fruit countless fruit so i ask you again another question actually is the very same question i asked at the beginning can you count the number of fruit in a seed The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw great many bones on the floor of the, of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Ezekiel 37, 1 to 3. If you do not know this Lord or this God who sets captives free, who breaks into darkness and brings in his light, who transforms lives and gives something different, something better, gives his life, I encourage you to seek him. I encourage you to turn away from your wicked ways let go of your sin, let go of your life, and ask him for his life. Ask him to make you his child. And he will keep his promise that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you already know Jesus Christ, there's something you can do right now. You can pray. So I'll ask you, I'll give you a minute to say a prayer for the people of Ghana, the people of Liberia, and the people of Kenya. Pray your heart's desire for them. And I'll close us in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you specifically for the people of Ghana, the people of Liberia, and the people of Kenya. I also pray for the people of Africa. I pray that, Lord, you send in your light, you break into the darkness, and you set them free. I also pray, Lord, for everyone listening to me right now. I pray that, Lord, you send in your light into their lives, you break out the darkness, and, Lord, you set them free. And finally, Lord, I pray for myself. I pray that you send in your light, you break out the darkness, and you set me free. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Well, it's a real honor to be able to come to you tonight to, at the close of this presentation, to share how you can have an opportunity to be a part of Mission Resource International. I have known... David Ketchum for many years, and I've seen this ministry grow from its inception. And I've seen David's passion to have an organization like this, to be a part of an organization like this, that changes lives. When you become a partner to Mission Resource International, you have a part in that change. Mission Resource is really about opportunities. People are given the opportunity in another part of the world to provide for their families that maybe they wouldn't have a chance to do otherwise. People are given an opportunity to start a business that will help a community. People are given the opportunity in other parts of the world to be a part of a church congregation and hear Christian music, Christian testimonies, 
uh, Christian programs on the radio, and all this has come about because of the efforts that Dave has put in for Mission Resource International. But most of all, people are given the opportunity to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. How much would you give for that? Tonight, you're not just being asked to make a donation. You're being asked to become a part of Mission Resource International as a partner. You're investing in people's lives. People's lives will be changed because of what you do. People that live halfway around the world, people you will never meet except maybe you'll meet them in heaven someday, but people that I can guarantee you are extremely grateful for what you can do for them. And I've been a part of that and I've personally invested my own time and money to help this organization and I hope that you'll do the same also. So tonight I'm asking you to join me in continuing to make this ministry, Mission Resource International, continue to make it strong. And here's how you can do it. Just look at the link on the screen and this will be a way in which you can, can check in and do that. And while you're thinking about that, while you're considering that, I'd like to close in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for what has been a part of your ministry with Mission Resource International. Thank you for David Ketchum, and thank you for the people that work along with him. Thank you for the sacrifice that they have made. And Lord, tonight we pray that those who are watching this program might want to do the same. We pray that they might want to make a sacrifice that would be a tremendous help. And Lord, we thank you for that, whether it be a large amount like 5000 or 10000 or $1,000, or whether it be a gift of just uh, $15 or 25 or 50 whatever it is, we pray that people who see this, we pray that everyone who sees this will want to be a part. Thank you again for what you do for us. Thank you for the blessings you send. Thank you for the success and the way people's lives have been changed in other parts of the world. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. I want to also ask you now to please consider taking a couple of minutes to watch the video about Mission Center produced by Morgan Murdoch. And thanks again for participating in tonight's virtual banquet.